Hello everybody and welcome back to the ASUS YouTube channel. This is JJ once again and we're bringing you another overview on a brand new product. Uh, specifically we're going to be talking about the brand new GTX 660 Ti series graphics card. Um, it's been about four months since the launch of the actual 600 series product in the GTX 680. Since then we've had some awesome releases in uh, not only the 680, 690, 670. Um, then it's really changed the landscape in terms of the graphics cards, in terms of what you're getting from performance, uh, power efficiency, uh, image quality enhancements, and a number of really cool technologies that have been brought uh, to, to the market with this new 106 series architecture uh, and in the Kepler architecture that's powering all of it. And today we're really hitting the kind of the sweet spot in terms of the mid-range market for you guys that are really interested in 1080p based gaming uh, as well as even an entry into 2560 based gaming and uh, other key technologies in terms of 3D and things along those lines. So from there, let's go ahead and actually start talking a little bit about the GTX 660 Ti. Okay guys, we've already cracked open the box and uh, here we've got the accessories laid out for you. So you can see first and foremost right off the bat we've got our actual quick setup guide. This is going to give you the information in terms of the connectivity on the card, how to connect it to your monitor, as well as some information on the GPU tweak software which is our utility which allows you to overclock uh, the card in terms of adjusting the clock speeds, voltages and the fan curves as well as even update the BIOS, so a really awesome piece of software. You've also got uh, two other accessories that are included here in terms of one being an actual DVI to VGA adapter. Okay, that's going to allow you to utilize it with a legacy monitor if you're not using one that carries uh, a digital interface like DVI. And then from there we've also got a PCI Express power adapter uh, so that of course allows you to go ahead and take Molex based power connections and uh, re relay them to an actual PCIe power connection. Here we have the box for the ASUS GTX 660 DirectCU 2 top series graphics card. As you can see I just talked about it being a top series card so that means that it is an overclocked SKU. It's actually the highest overclocked. We will have three versions of this card. A standard version, an OC version, and a top series version. This top series version comes clocked in at a boost clock of 1137. Um, that's in comparison to the actual reference series boost clock which would be about 900 80 megahertz. Now in terms of some of the specifications you see here listed on the box, of course the card is utilizing our award-winning DirectCU 2 series design, so that's a direct copper heat pipe with of course dual fans. This keeps the card really cool and quiet. We've got two gigabytes worth of memory. It's utilizing our brand new custom uh, VRM and PWM design in the Digi Plus uh, VRM as well as our SAP or our super alloyed power components and those are going to be specifically for the capacitors, the MOSFETs and the chokes on the car just really giving you top quality componentry and then of course we've got our GPU tweak utility which allows us to work uh, inside of Windows and be able to access all the really cool hardware design aspects to be able to overclock and tweak and tune our graphics card. Here we've got the GTX 660 Ti DirectCU 2 top. This is going to look exactly the same as the OC model and the standard model. The only dif uh, differentiation between them will be of course the clock speeds for the card. Um, as I noted this top series SKU will come in at 1137 in terms of the GPU boost clock but I have an end game boost clock actually that's closer to about 1188 and of course you still have additional overclocking margin within that because of course it being a top series card means that we've binned the actual uh, GPU for a higher level of performance and a higher level of overclockability. Now as you can see the card is actually a two slot design and uh, you, you of course can see of course a lot of the hallmark details in terms of it being a DC2 series graphics card so we of course have the nickel plated copper heat pipes that are of course helping us to efficiently wick away all the heat from the GPU die giving us cool operating temperatures. As I said in our gameplay tests um, we found that the overall temperatures were about 65 to about 69C um, an extremely extremely quiet card. Uh, you can see of course we have the two fans that are here on the front side of the card and we'll of course be touring around this and taking a look at some of the other design aspects. Okay, so here we've got our display output connectivity. As you can see, you've got pretty much everything you could want uh, for a current kind of digital system environment. So we've got dual DVI. Of course, the DVI supports supporting up to 2560 uh, resolutions. We've got the HDMI and the display port, both full-size connectors, and those support the latest specifications. Uh, and the great thing actually about the Kepler series architecture is that the actual multi-display support is really outstanding. So not only do you have the ability for single panel dual panel but actually even to the three panel display but you can drive an actual fourth panel as an accessory panel 
um, which is really cool. And uh, for you guys that are kind of thinking out of the box and you guys that might be testing out maybe the Windows 8 uh, release previews uh, or interested for Windows 8 comes out, imagine even maybe I would have the um, enhanced secondary UI interface running entirely on a separate panel while keeping your primary maybe gaming panel active on another one. So a lot of really cool display up connectivity and of course 3D is inherently supported, whether it be in movies, uh, whether it's going to be in games, or whether it's going to be for photographs. Okay, so here we are, we've got the back of the graphics card, and there's actually a lot going on that's here. Uh, in terms of the connectivity, you've, you can see that you have different connection options. You have the physical by 16 um, and of course this can operate in Gen 3 if you're using an Ivy Bridge or a Z77 based platform. And if you're utilizing X79, uh, there is an actual supported, let's say, uh, release update from NVIDIA that you can potentially enable Gen 3 support on an X79, but by default it would operate in Gen 2. Um, in either one of those environments, the performance is essentially going to be parity, uh, so it's not something to overall be worried about in that regard. Although, if you're going to be considering multi-GPU configurations, uh, three-way SLI, which actually is going to be new to this 60 series, uh, might be something you're going to want to best consider on X79, but it's going to definitely be an option on Z77 boards uh, that support it. Here at the top, you can see that we have, of course, the SLI connections, and as I noted, you can run this card in one way, two-way, or three-way SLI configuration. So that's awesome in terms of enhancing the performance, especially if you're looking at 2560 plus gaming, or even 5000 uh, resolution-based gaming. So that would be across three panels, whether it's 3D or non-3D. Now, in terms of some of the hardware uh, design implementations, you can actually see right here in the center of the card, we have four pause caps. Uh, this is in our direct, what's called back-to-back -back design implementation. So these very high performance capacitors provide us a, a large level of power delivery directly to the GPU, which is right on the other side. And when we take a look at, uh, take a look at the card and we actually break it apart, you'll be able to see that the uh, GPU is on the other side. And that's actually what these guys are doing, is they're helping to give enhanced power delivery specifically to the GPU so that as we overclock it, we can get the best stability and the best headroom. From here, lastly, we've got, of course, some uh, power connectivity. We have two six-pin PCI Express power connections. And in addition to that, we actually do have LEDs that are directly underneath those that let you know whether or not you've made actually a clean, secure connection. So when your actual PCI Express power is connected and it's working correctly, you'll have a green LED. And when it's not, you'll actually have kind of like an amber, uh, semi-red LED letting you know that you need to make that connection. And keep in mind for you guys that are interested in terms of power consumption, it's outstanding. This card by default is only operating somewhere at about 150 watts power target profile, um, but in real game usage it actually can be quite a bit under that. For single GPU configurations, we found our system running total, so CPU, memory, graphics card, uh, drives everything. Uh, close to about 225 to about 250 watts, and then even under SLI configurations, we weren't exceeding about 350 to 375 watts. So a really uh, impressive card in terms of the performance and the power efficiency. So from here, we're actually going to crack this card open. Okay guys, we've gone ahead and actually separated uh, the heatsink and fan assembly from the PCB board, so we're going to just dive into touching on some of the unique design aspects of this. So first and foremost right here, we've already shown that of course the DC2 design, it being two, means that there's two fans on here. But these actually fans are unique. Um, these are actually our, what's called dustproof series fans. So in them being dustproof, um, actually what we've done is embedded a really cool technology that on the inside of the hub assembly, so actually how this fan makes the connection to the inside side bearing and allows it to turn, it's double sealed. And what that means is these fans won't be impacted by like dust, debris, dander, things that might just be floating around, getting inside your chassis, getting inside that hub, that it would eventually stop this fan blade from being able to turn around, overall reducing its reliability and its ability to cool your graphics card. So a really cool piece of design tech that you don't see right off the bat, but you can feel confident in having in our series graphics cards. So with that, let's go ahead and jump over to the other side and take a look. Here we have the actual other side of the Direct CE2 heatsink fan assembly body, and this is actually uh, the key part that helps us to really dissipate uh, the heat. So, of course, we have our direct contact copper technology with three high performance heat pipes that make direct contact to the GPU, allowing it to go ahead and wick away the heat from the GPU into these high performance heat pipes and then into the finned assembly, which are, of course, cooled by the fans that we saw on the other side. In terms of the cooling performance, it's really outstanding, helps to really keep a strong combination of being cool and quieter. 
not only uh, cool and quiet, but actually considerably cooler and quieter than the reference series designs that you're going to see out there that are using uh, a standard single fan design or a blower type uh, design. And even actually as you go ahead and increase the actual fan rotation speed, not only are you going to increase the performance of cooling potential, but you're still going to keep the card actually operating very quietly. Uh, we found that even up to about 65%, um, not only were we able to really help to cool our high level level overclock, which was about 1225 uh, megahertz, uh, it was actually only running at about 57C in terms of in-game performance. So really awesome combination of kind of bringing it all together between the DirectC2 design, the SAP and the DG Plus VRM, and then our GPU tweak software. So. Uh, lastly here, of course, you can see that we've got four screws. It's very simple at being able to go ahead and remove the heatsink and fan assembly from the PCB body, should you ever want to maybe reapply TIM um, or maybe reseat the card or anything along those lines. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the PCB and the VRM. Here you can see we've got the actual DTX 660 bare for you, so you can actually check it out in all its awesome glory. Uh, in the center, of course, we have the GTX 660 Ti GPU itself, and uh, surrounding it, we of course have the two gigabytes worth of memory, with some of the memory actually being on the back side of the card. Now, in terms of the card design specifications itself, we've gone already kind of gone over those. Here we're going to touch on what makes the card unique to ASUS and it being a non-reference series design. So we've got this awesome black matte PCB, which just looks great. You can see, of course, how clean and clear everything is. It really shows a high attention to detail in terms of the design layout. Now, some of the things that are different than the reference series is right here in terms of the phase count, a reference series product is only going to have four phases. So as you can see right here, we have our actual six phase design, and this is actually our high quality SAP. So that means that we have a special kind of metallurgic uh, material uh, makeup for these that provide a much higher level of performance, overall improved reliability, and overall better reliability. Uh, so really outstanding. So one, two, three, four, five, six uh, phase design versus the standard design of only four phase. We have then, of course, our super alloyed capacitors. These have twice the lifespan of normal series high performance capacitors and also are significantly more uh, reliable, especially at higher temperature levels, uh, which especially if you're considering SLI configurations, of course you're going to be increasing the temperature of your internal chassis. Uh, now here's another kind of nice attention to detail. You can see that for the MOSFETs, which we have super alloyed MOSFETs as well, those are actually the hottest component of any type of VRM and we've taken that attention in detail that we know that you might overclock this card and also you want the best cooling and the reliability so we've put a nice high performance heat sink assembly on top of that and even has micro points of diffusion to help in aid in cooling it and of course the airflow that's coming in from the two fans from the DC2 design will help to add additional flow uh, and add into the dissipation abilities. Right below that, we've got the Digi Plus VRM, which is our digital power technology, which just helps us to overall have great efficiency, um, enhance the overall overclockability, add to stability, and give us really the best level of control and tweaking and tuning possible on the graphics cards. This is the cutting edge stuff out there in terms of what really makes our cards different than, let's say, reference series design, which are still using solid but older analog-based design implementations. So rounding that out, once again, we've got uh, the SAP, uh, capacitors, the SAP chokes or inductors, and then the SAP MOSFETs that are underneath there. Overall, a very high performance card, really awesome attention to detail here. So wrapping things up, you know, we spent some time talking about the actual DTX 660Ti, um, an awesome series mainstream card, you know, you're going to be looking at around a $300 price point at its release. Our top series is going to be a little bit more because of course it's going to be an overclock SKU, um, but really an outstanding value when you consider the performance that it's going to be offering, especially in comparison to the previous generation products, where not only you're actually getting an increase in performance and in image quality, being able to take advantage of things like TXXA and FXXA anti-aliasing technologies, enhanced tessellation performance, 3D technology support, um, but all of that, you know, and when you're talking about about 150 watt power envelope is outstanding. Um, you bring to the table then, of course, the enhancements that we're doing with, let's say, DirectCU, our Digi Plus VRM, our SR, SA, SAP power technologies, and overall kind of our attention to detail, and you've got a really awesome part. And uh, NVIDIA's kind of even made the pot sweeter, as you can see here, on our Maximus 5 Extreme, we've gone ahead and set this up in a three-way configuration, which is a big bump over uh, compared to the previous generation of the 560 part, which was limited to two-way SLI parts. But whether you were a gamer that was taking a look at, um, you know, an upgrade from, let's say, a GTX 260 class product 
you definitely want to consider this. Not only at that generation did you not have DirectX 11 tessellation support um, and a number of other image quality technologies available to you, um, but of course the card produced a lot more heat and uh, was nowhere near as power conscious in terms of what you could do with this card. So at that performance marker, you were looking at 3x plus the performance uh, increase, uh, not to mention all the image quality enhancements. 470 cards, still we're looking at about 1.5 to 2, 2x performance increases. And 560s, keep in mind for the 500 series, this card is faster than a GTX 580. So for you guys that bought a 560 because you couldn't buy a 580 part, Keep in mind, this is going to consistently be faster than even a GTX 580 part by quite a bit. So overall, really an impressive part for the amount of money that you're paying. Uh, and definitely with our card, you're going to be getting a great card in terms of not only its performance, but overall the, the actual footprint in terms of the power consumption you're going to be taking up. And then, of course, the acoustics and uh, from there, the temperature performance as well. So as always, if you guys have any questions, comments, feedback, I definitely take a lot of time and actually answer them here on our YouTube page. And you can also always hit us up at Facebook and Twitter. And if you guys enjoyed the content, please make, make, make sure and subscribe.